Okay. Yeah, they're about 30 We don't have... Do I, Saban's at the podium. Welcome back. We'll continue today's press conference with Alabama head coach Nick Saban. Coach Saban, we welcome you back to the SEC championship game. If you could give some opening remarks, and then we'll open it up for questions. Well, we're glad to be here. But first of all, I'd like to congratulate, you know, Kirby and the Georgia team for going through an undefeated season and winning the the East. Um, they certainly had a fantastic season and um, they've proven to be one of the best football teams in the country. So this is certainly a challenge uh, for us uh, to be able to compete in the SEC championship game against such a quality team. Um, you know, I'd like to thank the Southeastern Conference for making this one of the greatest venues in college football, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, the people of Atlanta, all the people who do um, a lot of work to make this game a first-class event. Um, you know, our team is trying to focus on what they need to do to go play the kind of game that we'll need to play to beat a very, very good team, uh, probably the best team we played all year. Um, I think the challenge for you as a player is uh, you got to be ready to play and assume that the guy you're playing against is the best player you played against all year. And I think if you take that approach and channel your energy and enthusiasm into execution on the field, that'll give you the best chance to be successful. For media with questions, please utilize the hand raise function, and we will begin with Charlie Potter of Bama Online. Yeah, hey, Coach. Um, it looked like Caleb Downs played quite a bit of star in this past game. Just how has he handled learning and playing multiple roles, and maybe how has that helped the defense out? Yeah, well, we started doing that in the Kentucky game, especially, um, you know, when they play bigger people. Um, so um, that that's – he's handled it very, very well. Uh, gives a little bigger body at star, a guy that can play the runs and stuff a little better. So uh, that was the thinking behind it, and that's why we did it. But it's it's not been an issue at all for him and his learning curve. Next is Nick Kelly of the Tuscaloosa News. Hey, Nick. Uh, Jason McClellan, how has he progressed health-wise so far this week? Yeah, he's uh, not been able to do a lot. Uh, so – you know, we'll see how he does today, uh, where he is. And um, I'd say that we'd have to say he's probably questionable for the game at this point. But, um, you know, I think it's probably too early to tell. Our next question comes from Mike Rodak of 24-7 Sports. What do you want the committee to see about your team as, as they watch you on Saturday? Look, we're not really worried about the committee. Um, I'm not concerned about any of those things. I mean, we've got a big challenge here in terms of trying to play the best football that we can play and prepare our team to play the best that they can play. Uh, I want our team to focus on the game uh, because that's what we can control. Uh, we really can't control anything externally, but we can try to control how we play. Uh, and I think that's the most important thing for us to be focused on right now. Next up is Tony Lopez of East Coast Gridiron. Hey, Nick. Hey, uh, Jermaine Burton has been playing with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, it seems. Um, what? How important was it in the last two weeks to get him involved in the offense for having the two 100-plus yard games? Yeah, well, he's been a big part of the offense all year long, and he's played well all year long. Uh, I think, um, you know, you say a guy gets involved, but you're really reading a play based on the coverage. And sometimes one guy gets the opportunity to make a big play, and sometimes it's somebody else. But when he's had his opportunities, he's certainly taken advantage of them. And, you know, we're happy to see that. And uh, I think that, you know, he's an outstanding player, and we want him to go in and stay focused on what he needs to do to do his job well in this game. And um, he's been a great contributor to our offense, and he can make explosive plays. And Hopefully, we'll get some opportunities for him to do that in this game. Next will be Oscar Clierga of Claro Sports. Thanks so much. Hello from Mexico, Coach. It's a great pleasure to see you again. The question is simple. What is the most important thing in this week? The mental stuff or the physical stuff for your players? And could you say some words to all the Mexican fans, the Crimson Tide, 
Michigan fans. Thanks so much. Gracias, coach. Yeah, well, we thank everybody who supports Crimson Tide uh, in Mexico and any place else in the country or the world for that matter. So we appreciate your support. But I think both things are really, really important. I think at this time of the year, you know, players get a little tired, they get a little banged up, they get a little hurt up. Uh, so the psychological part of being able to grind through that and have the mental toughness to stay focused and uh, on the things that you need to do to play well, uh, create the right habits in practice, prepare for the game like you need to is a challenge. Uh, but I think it's very, very important. And I think it's very important to take care of yourself physically, not only on the field, but getting the right kind of rest, eating right, hydrating correctly. You know, all those things, you know, contribute to how you can sustain performance in the game. Next will be Mike Griffith of AJC Dog Nation. Coach, you were kind of on the front end of this uh, portal transfer NIL a few years ago at spring meetings when you told us that this was the world we might be getting into. How, how challenging is it to manage the portal NIL recruiting and roster management while you're preparing for a championship game? Is this model sustainable? Yeah, well, I don't know if it's sustainable or not, uh, but – uh, look, I've always been in favor of the players uh, having a better quality of life uh, and sharing in some of the benefits. I think that, you know, if we could create competitive balance, so it's the same, you know, pretty much for everybody so that one school can't choose to invest more than another and create a com competitive imbalance. I think that's the major concern that I have. Um, and I do think it's it's a tough management. You know, we've been trying to focus on the game here. So uh, we're, we're going to look, look to manage all those things, you know, when this game is over. Um, but, you know, it's it's not easy. It's not easy to do. There's a lot of balls in the air. And, and I'm sure players are thinking about a lot of things right now, too. So it's probably tough for them to manage. A reminder for questions, please utilize the hand raise function. And we'll continue now with Steve Moulton of ESPN 1400. Hey, Coach, appreciate the time. I, I wanted to ask uh, what you said right after the Iron Bowl of the dangers of winning a game like that, albeit you didn't play your best. Uh, just if you could further explain what you meant by that and, and maybe how the week of practice has gone as well, Coach. Yeah, well, I think that, you know, sometimes – when you win and don't play like you'd like to have played, um, players aren't as interested in why do we have to make these corrections? Why is this so important? Um, you have to have a certain maturity about you as a competitor to understand that there's lessons to be learned when you win as well as when you lose. When you lose, you know, everybody's really like humiliated and, um, really wants to go focus on all the things they need to do to play better um, because they don't feel good about themselves. So uh, having the maturity to be able to manage and learn and build on the good things that you did, uh, as well as still be able to learn the lessons that go with some of the mistakes that you made, uh, I think that's the key to the drill. And I think our players have handled that you know, pretty well this week. We've got time for additional questions. If you have a question for Coach Saban, please use the hand raise function. And we'll continue with uh, Corey Labonte of WNSP Radio. Coach, you've been coach, you've been very vocal this season about the support that the fans have given you and the positive energy that they've given your players throughout the contest. What message do you have for your fans that will be attending the championship game on Saturday? I, I don't think it changes much. Uh, I mean – you know, as many fans as we can get there and uh, as much enthusiasm as they can create to try to help us sustain energy, you know, throughout the game is certainly much appreciated. Uh, but it's also, I think, beneficial to, you know, the players being able to stay focused and engaged on what they need to do in the game. We have a follow-up from Mike Griffith of AJC Dog Nation. Coach, I know we've all written uh, the story about you and Kirby and the mentorship there. I guess I want to give you a chance. Could you share some of, about some of your mentors uh, that led you down this path to championships and greatness in college football? Yeah, well, I don't know about all the compliments, but I appreciate them. But, um, you know, I had some great mentors along the way. Uh, first of all, I had a great college coach in Don James who actually 
encouraged me and talked me into becoming a coach because it's not something I really wanted to do. And uh, he was very well organized and um, he really sort of looked at developing players, not only on the field, but off the field in terms of developing character that would help them be more successful in life, which is something we've always tried to do. Um, Bill Belichick was a great mentor in terms of organization football, um, you know, from every part of the organization, how you evaluate players, the kind of players you want on your team, the kind of team you want to have, the kind of system when you, you want to use. So um, George Perlis was a great mentor at Michigan State. It's the first opportunity I had to be a coordinator, first person to give me responsibility. And, um, you know, he had been very successful with the Pittsburgh Steelers and, you know, winning four Super Bowls there. So um, those three guys probably had the biggest impact on me. Um, but I've had and learned so much from so many people. I hate to leave anybody out because I've never really invented anything in this game. Uh, always just learn from other really good coaches and good teachers. We have a follow-up from Steve Moulton as well. Coach, uh, wh where do you think your team has improved the most since Texas in particular, Coach? Uh, I think the team has improved, you know, dramatically in terms of transformation of confidence, playing together. Uh, good leadership. Uh, but if you had to say, where did we improve the most? I would say it's probably offensively. Um, you know, the transformation of Jalen Milrow at quarterback uh, to be productive uh, has been huge in terms of elevating the confidence of the entire offensive team. The improvement in the offensive line has helped us be able to have a little better balance in the game. Uh, the receivers have all played better. So um, if there is a specific area, I would say that would be. But I think the team as a whole has also improved uh, because of their um, confidence, playing with more confidence. If there are any other questions, please use the raise hand function. Steve, go ahead. Coach, I do have kind of one off-the-wall question. I asked uh, Lane Kiffin the week of the Ole Miss-Georgia game about some Kirby stories, and he mentioned about a tug-of-war there at Alabama in which he beat Kirby in a one-on-one -on -one tug of war. I was wondering if you re recall that as well, Coach. I do not, but my money would have been on Kirby. <laughs> If I was going to bet, I didn't, I don't remember it, but I'm just, that would be my comment. <laughs> Next, we'll go to Heather Dinich of ESPN. Coach, I understand that you're not worried about what the committee's doing right now, but I'm sure that you've heard, and I think you, you talked about this on, on Pat's show, about the narrative of the possibility that the SEC could get left out, because if you win this game, that loss in Tuscaloosa to Texas did happen, and that's how the rankings have unfolded. I just wanted to ask you your reaction to that and your thoughts on the on the SEC's place in the playoff. Well, I think I commented on it earlier, but to reiterate it, uh, I think that uh, the SEC is one of the best conferences in the country. I think Georgia is one of the best teams in the country, uh, and I think that they're one of the best four teams in the country. I think if we beat them would be one of the best four teams in the country um, because, you know, teams do um, there's a transformation that goes through the season. Uh, so how are you playing now? Where is your team now? How good are you now? I think all those things, you know, come into play, but I, I think it would be a, a disrespect to the SEC if um, there is an SEC representation in the final four. I do believe that. Next will be Kate Windham of Bama Central. Coach, what have you seen from Jihad Campbell this season and the way that he stepped up when others have been injured, just his ability to make big plays, it seems like? Yeah, well, he makes a ton of plays. Um, he's very athletic. He can run he's fast. Uh, he's a good football player. Uh, it's a new position for him. So um, he's made consistent improvement throughout the, the season, understanding what he needs to do at his position to execute, you know, his role. 
uh, in that particular call. So, uh, but his production and performance has been really, really good for us. And uh, we certainly needed him because we've had a lot of injuries at that position throughout the season. We have an additional question from Corey LeBounty of WNSP Radio. Coach, Coach Deontay Lawson being that alpha dog on your defense. Talk about what he means to your defense this season and his growth and development as a player this year. Yeah, he's played extremely well for us. Uh, he's played well all year long. Uh, but I think the one thing that he does is, you know, he is kind of the leader. Uh, he is very smart. He's very intelligent. He understands the game plan. He prepares well for the game. He knows exactly what he's supposed to do and what everybody in the front seven is supposed to do. Uh, so um, I think when he's out there, uh, everybody's more comfortable. Everybody's more confident uh, because he's a signal caller uh, and he's, he's, you know, very confident in making the right calls and getting uh, everybody playing together in the front seven, which is really important. If there are any final questions for Coach Saban, please use the raise hand function. All right, Coach, that's going to wrap you up for today. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to welcoming you back to Atlanta tomorrow. All right, thank you. Appreciate you all. For members of the